to a highway. He made a way for you. You turned morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one you can. You turn it back to You turn praise into God.
in this room. You know, the Lord just was ministering to me during that whole, that whole set of worship. That there are some watching, there's some in this room, there'll be some in the next room, there'll be some watching the next service, there'll be some watch it later. That in their heart and in their mind, they're mocking people's worship to the Lord. So I'm just telling you, if that's you in here and that just pricked your heart, you need to listen very closely to the word of the Lord. Not just be like, that, eh, whatever. Because that whatever attitude is not going to ever benefit you. David, King David, when they brought the Ark of the Covenant in, David danced recklessly before the Lord. And Saul's daughter, Michael, came out and mocked him and shamed him for his worship. And David said, basically, in these words, <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet. And the Bible, your Bible says that she never bore any children till she died. She was barren in her life because of her mockery of someone's worship to God Almighty. And man, it, God really, I'm telling you folks, we're in an hour and we're in a day and we're in a time in the church where the people of God absolutely have to be the example in this earth. We serve a mighty God. And you can say, well, this just isn't my style. Well, what is your style? Could you worship him to how great they are? Could, I mean, what's it gonna take? God sent Jesus to the earth to die for you. What else do you need? I, I don't get it. Like, I just can't. It, I, it, well, that's just not my personality. You mean you can't even do this? You, you can't even honor God by raising at least one hand? Like, you can't even put one hand to heaven and say, God, thank you. That's not your person. Thinking God is not someone's person. He said, Pastor, you're being a little rough. Well, if a shoe fits, wear it. It's all I know to tell you. Because you would be the one sitting at the end of your life looking me in the eye saying, why didn't you tell me that my entire life would be barren if I didn't worship God? So you can blame me now, but you will not blame me then. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to be held accountable for not saying what God wants said in this earth. And I'm telling you, when we worship God, it ought to be the loudest, joyful, happiest time when we come together in corporate worship. Some of the reason you don't do it here is because you never do it anywhere else. The people that I watch worship openly are the people that I know worship alone. Alone with God. Time with God. Spent with God. What are you saying, preacher? I don't like it. I don't like what you're saying. Good. Because it's time somebody challenged that I don't like it attitude. <laughs> I refuse to lead in a culture 
where hatred is louder. I refuse to do it. If we, the people of God, cannot come into a room and worship God openly, then I ask the question, what makes you think that we'll ever be able to make a difference publicly? <laughs> That's all fair. <laughs> Those are all fair questions. I get it. Not everybody's style is the same. But I dare say, if you were at your favorite musical artist concert, I'm talking not Christian music, and they said put your hands in the air, you would never even argue. I've been to the concerts, I know. Everybody's got their hands up. What are they, who are they praising? I can tell you it ain't God. Now, so are you down? Look, I'm just trying to make a point that we can all understand that if God thought enough of us to give his son away to die, then surely it wouldn't strain us too much to put a hand in the air and praise the God of heaven. That's all I'm saying. And I, be, I believe with everything in me, that's the, that's the voice and the heart of God. Take it for what it's worth. Take it out the door, leave it here. It's yours now. You'll be judged for it now, not me. <laughs> that's a fact. Amen. Or oh me. Huh? It's the truth. So that's the problem. Truth sometimes, you know, you gotta kinda wear it a minute. Right? How many of you ever been told the truth? You knew it was the truth and it hurt. But you knew it was going to help you. The truth is what helps us, not sugarcoating this. Right? Not, not candy stripe preaching. Amen. Now, I want to lead people and help people and put stuff in people that's going to cause us to have backbone in this world because it's long overdue. Amen. Well, I know you can't hug each other, I don't guess. Don't even get me started. Just air high five somebody. If it's your family unit, hug them tighter. And then y'all take your seat. I'm gonna teach you something. Thank you, gentlemen. The reason two of those guys carry that over here is because it weighs a ton. And it's awkward. <laughs> I could carry it over here, but I'm liable to drop it off the stage if I come over here with it. But, hey, look, it's good to be here this morning. I'm thankful you're here. If you're visiting with us, thank you for being here. If you're visiting with us online, thank you for being online with us. Now, I know every, everything is kind of, everybody is just sort of easing back to normal. Some have, like, jumped in head first to normal. And uh, we're working on getting this, all of this over there, Children's Church, all of this. We're working on getting everything back where it's at least somewhat normal. I, I don't. 
I don't know about the whole new normal thing. All, you know, you hear all that talk. I, I really don't want to try to land on a new normal. I want to land on the supernatural. Right? I mean, come on. It's the truth, and y'all know it if you come here all the time, that we see supernatural moves of God here quite regularly. And I think that that for the most part, the feel in the room is a little bit of reluctancy to that because everybody has, all of us, I'm including myself, we've all been listening to reports and this and that, and I don't sit and just stare at the TV all day, but I do like to at least for a few minutes kind of put my thumb on what's going on in society so I at least have some kind of idea how to pray, what we're doing, what, what's going on. I want to encourage you, don't just sit and feed on doubt and fear all day. Okay, please, I'm, just, I'm trying to help you because I understand it'll drive you up the wall, right? And we don't want that. I don't want you going Lulu, right? I want you staying sane, amen? So, um, the title today, hey guys, the title today is Division is Not God's Plan. Division is Not God's Plan. Now I have, I'm not going to spend a, a massive amount of time this morning, but I'm gonna, I just have to tell you this. That what I see in this country is gross. Division means this. It means two visions. It's pretty simple. And the reality is this. There are two basic visions in the earth today and only one of those visions bring life. Only one of those. Not two of those, only one of those. You know, division started in the garden. I'm telling you folks, you can look at anything in society and any culture and you can always trace it back to the garden. There was no division till sin came. Who brought sin? The enemy. Why? He's trying to, to, to divide God's creation from the creator. That was the goal. Satan wanted the power. And so he went on a power grab to try to divide God's creation from him. And he was successful in it. And that same spirit has been in the earth ever since then. And it's an operation now. It's an operation in the, in the church. Not, I'm not saying this church. I'm just saying the church. People are divided. And it's over the dumbest thing on planet earth. I'm, I'm telling you. Racism, prejudice... And I'm, I'm just going to say it, and it may hit some of you straight in the heart, and I don't even care. It doesn't matter to me. If you're sitting in this room and you're racist and you get up and walk out, I won't even break a sweat. Because it's the dumbest thought on planet Earth. It's just dumb. Here's the reality. God created every human being. All of us. Now, we may not see everything like everybody else, right? I'm not going to see the world like an African American. I'm not going to see the world like a Hispanic. I'm not going to see the world like a Filipino. I'm not going to see the world like a Chinese person. But guess what? They're not going to see the world like we do. We were all raised different. We all come from different places. We're all different, yet we're all the same. <laughs> we're all different in background or culture or color, 
but yet we're all the same because we have a heartbeat on the inside of us pumping red blood and all of us created by the same God. Amen. I, I know some of y'all are like, I don't know if I should clap. I don't know what to do. You know, I don't care what you do. It don't make no difference to me. I'm just telling you the straight up truth. It's ridiculous that we've fought wars, that people have died. For what? For what? Now, I'm a lot younger than some of you, and some of you grew up in a lot different time than I did. But for what? For what did they die? Well, the men that fought on the Union side in the Civil War died trying to restore dignity and save a nation. Now, I know I'm in the South, and some people don't like to hear that. I don't really care. I'm, I'm so far past the point of caring about people's opinions on this subject that I could scream. And while the church has set silent generation after generation after generation, look at the world today. And I'm going to tell you, you can blame whoever you want. You can blame the government. You can blame this. You can blame music. You can blame that. But I'm going to tell you where the blame lies. It lies in the church house. That's where the blame lies. Because the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is the moral voice on the earth. And we're the ones to stand and declare the truth of the word of God. It's the church of the, it's not the government. It's not the Senate. It's not the Congress. It, it's the church that's to declare that all people are created by God Almighty. And all people are equal in the blood that runs through their veins and the Savior that died for them. Amen. God's vision is that all people be saved. Do you realize there are some people in the church, not this church because y'all are taught better. There are some people that claim the name of Jesus that do not believe the statement I just made. They don't believe it. They don't believe that everybody is supposed to be saved. They don't believe that. Again, dumb. I don't even know how you can read the Bible and come up with that assessment. I mean, look, I'm no PhD. I didn't get a college degree. I barely got out of Livingston Central High School. Like, it was a blessing to the teachers when I left. They're like, thank God he made it. I mean, they were praising God. They're like, hallelujah, he's out of here. But I'm going to tell you, it don't take a rocket scientist to look at the Bible and figure out that Jesus died for the entire creation of humanity. And then we want to sit around and pick and choose who can come and go. Dumb. I should have just titled this message Dumb and just started making all the dumb statements. <laughs> John 3. Everybody knows it. I mean, come on. They quote this in the, in the bars. Well, you know, God loves everybody. <laughs> yeah, even you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> for God so loved now let me ask you this would that mean every color of human on the, on the earth look this is not what I'm saying to you this morning is not a white thing or, or, a, or a black thing I'm saying this is a people thing this is a human deal the gospel is a human gospel amen I, I want to look around the church and see Hispanics. I if there's an Asian culture, I want to see Asian. I mean, I want the church, wherever we're at, ought to be a picture of heaven. Right. Amen. Okay, so God so loved the world that he gave. He, he's the ultimate giver. He gave his only begotten son that whoever, whoever, whether they're uh, Chinese or Japanese or African or whatever. 
That's why we send people out to preach the gospel. That's why we go around the world to preach the gospel. And I've had people tell me, well, why do you want to go over there and preach the gospel? Like, what do you mean? Why would you go to those people? I'm like, I'm done talking to you. Like, I can't even stomach that thought. Well, you ought to be preaching here. But dude, I preach here all the time. Well, won't somebody else go? Well, I don't know. Are we going to depend on that? Hope that somebody else go and then be standing before the Lord and him say, I tried to tell you to go. Why didn't you go? But I was waiting on somebody else. Because that's what they said, dude. Right? Again, dumb. I'm beginning to like that word more and more. <laughs> so whoever believes in him should not perish. Look, this is God's plan now. This is God's vision. That whoever would believe in him, his son, would not perish but have everlasting life. Okay? Okay? For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world, everybody, anybody, whoever, through him might be saved. Okay? He who believes in him is not condemned. But he who believes, or who does not believe, is condemned already. In other words, they've, it's already been put in play. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now, the enemy has a vision. And it's that all people be under his dominance and ultimately be destroyed. John 10, 10, please. Folks, I've taught, I've taught these two passages of scripture in this church in the last 12 years. No telling how many times. And I'm just going to be quite honest with you. If we don't have these two figured out, I don't even know what we're doing. I honestly don't even know what we're doing. The thief, obviously that's not God, because we've already discovered he's a giver. The thief, who would that be? Satan. He started stealing in the garden. The thief does not come except to steal. Like that's the only reason he's coming. Now remember the series we did and I taught you? He comes to steal the word. Why? If he steals the word, it's a cakewalk for him after that. Because you, you don't have any defense then. Because you've put the word away and you fell for a lie. This is what happened to Adam and Eve. They let the word of God away from them, get away from them, and they believed a lie from the enemy. The, he's only there to steal and to kill. That word means butcher. And to destroy. That's his vision. I mean, look around. Look at what people are doing to each other. All over the earth. I'm not just saying, and I'm saying all over the earth. Look at what people are doing to one another. Where do you think that thought came from? It didn't come from God. I have come. This is Jesus now. Jesus is telling you about the thief. Then he says, here's why I'm here. I have come that they may have life. And not just muddling through, but that they may have it more abundantly. That's the vision of God, that you have life and have it abundantly, that every human have life and have it abundantly. Every human have life and have it abundantly. Now look, I don't go on political rants from this pulpit. I don't come up here and tell you who to vote for. But you better hear what I'm about to say. You cannot and I cannot afford to vote for anyone. I don't care if they're running for dog catcher. If they stand on a platform that agrees that you can snuff the life of a human out and it's an elective or whatever they call it kind of deal, you will stand before the Lord and give an account for that. It has to stop. 
He said, well, I don't like that you talked about that. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care if you don't like it. The truth of the matter is we should be standing up and declaring God's word and his truth that every human being. Listen, if you vote for people that believe that, why don't you just look at your kids and tell them you hate them? Why don't you just go home and set the kids around the table and say, you know, I like to vote for people who believe in killing children. I don't even like you. Oh, my Lord, preacher, I know. Man, I've been so convicted over the last 12 weeks that we as a people have remained silent. Years ago, they passed abortion. While some of the church, I wasn't even, I don't even, I guess I was a little kid then, just sat by. Well, there's nothing we can do. I'm going to tell you there's something we can do. And it starts in the voting booth. He said, well, I'm a this and I've been this. and I don't care. It doesn't matter. Are you a human that loves people? I mean, come on. It's not... Oh, I've got to get off that because there will be more things come out of my mouth than you can handle, I assure you. They won't be cussing. But you'd be like, dear Jesus, I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> Genesis 1. Who said, who's making this statement? He said, let us, us, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They're always working together. You can't just have a couple and leave one out or have one and leave all of them out. They don't work that way. Let us make man in our image. In other words, let us make all people in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Notice, just leave it up for a second. Notice what it didn't say. It did not say let them have dominion over other humans. (laughs) Why did it not say that? Because we're all created in his image. (laughs) Okay, next verse. So God, I mean, they're, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are having a conversation, and it's a good idea. How many of you know God doesn't come up with bad ideas? God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Acts 17, 26. I'm just going to read you the first part of this verse. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth. Now some of you, some of you grew up in, in cities and different places. I grew up in Salem. It was not a, what I would say, a multicultural town. Right? And so you grow up not knowing things. I remember, I won't give you my whole life story. I just want to give you this snippet. I had gotten saved. I was in my 20s. I had gotten saved, and I had had to deal with a lot of wrong thinking. (laughs) And I was was in a, a conference in Charlotte, North Carolina, And for the first time in my life, I hugged someone who was not the color of my skin. And they probably thought I was weird because I wouldn't let go. 
because what I had felt and thought in my heart, I now put into a physical action. And it was one of the most liberating moments of my entire life. It was wonderful. Because things I had had in my heart that I knew I had put away, now I got to put into practice. And it was glorious. And quite honestly, I've never looked at the world the same. It doesn't matter to me how God wrapped you. The fact is you were created by him. It makes no difference to me. I don't care. It's, it's like it, whatever. You're a human. I love you because you're created by the same God that created me. And if I don't understand you, I need to ask a question. We just need to quit assuming everything and that we're right about everything and start asking questions. And I would, I would, I would welcome the same. So if you're watching out there, I would welcome the question. What was it like to grow up in a culture that wasn't multicultural? It was odd. Very. I'm thankful that we were able for several years to raise our daughter in a culture that we ministered to every. I mean, it was like you go to one neighborhood and minister to seven or eight different cultures all at one time. Oh, it was wonderful. It looks like heaven. There's not going to be any separated neighborhoods in heaven. Thank God. Galatians 3, 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And we could say it like this. There is neither black, there is neither white, there is neither brown, there is neither yellow. No, we're all made in Christ Jesus. All of us are made one in Christ Jesus. All this, uh, all this talk in our culture, you know, and I love you ladies. I have nothing against women, but this whole thing, girl power, we're going to dominate. No, we're all one. Everybody just take a breath and calm down. Like, everybody just quit trying to pick sides. Like, I'm on God's side. Whatever God says, that's the side I'm on. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body. It's talking about the church. Whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. If you're visiting today or you're watching online and you sit in a church where a preacher will stand behind a pulpit and make racist jokes, you should get up and leave that place and don't ever return. I'm going to tell you something. He's not fit to be a man of God preaching the gospel. I said it right out loud. It's on video if you want to go back and watch it again. And I'm not ashamed of it any at all, none whatsoever. Because he cannot reach the world that Jesus died for. Amen. I told you it'd be an amen or oh me. <laughs> Not every week's like this. Some of y'all are like, thank God. I'm like, Romans 10, 12 through 13. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich or blesses to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I love it. I love it. I love the gospel. Because I can stand on a platform anywhere in the world. And I may be in cultures where I'm white as a snowflake. And I can stand there and proclaim the truth about a God that died for everyone on this entire earth. Doesn't matter 
the color of our skin. It matters the condition of our heart when we leave this life. That's what matters. It's the condition of the human heart. And that's the problem in the earth today. It's the condition of the human heart. It's not, it's not a skin color. I mean, I get it. There's racism in the earth. And it's horrible. It's terrible. It's nasty. But it's a heart issue. It's a heart issue. When you do not care about your fellow man, it is a heart issue. And we've got to get to the matter of the heart. And the only way to get to the matter of the heart is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. How God sent His Son into this earth. Why? Because He loved His creation so much He couldn't stand to see what was happening to His creation because the enemy had fed His creation a lie and now His creation was being destroyed by sin and God sent His Son into the earth because He adores His creation and He wanted His people to be with Him. That's why Jesus came. Jesus didn't come to give us another religion. Jesus didn't come to give us a place to stand and tell everybody else they're terrible and we're great. No, Jesus came that the world through him might be saved. That's why he came. Amen. Come on, I want everybody to stand to your feet. Go ahead and pull the lights down. I want everybody all over this room to bow your head. All of you, every one of you. I know we're supposed to stay six feet apart. I get all that. But I'm fixing to make a call to this altar. And I'm telling you, if you wind up four feet apart, ain't nobody going to drag you out of here. And if they try, they're going to have me on their hands. If you're in this room, and I'm saying you're going to have to get, you're going to have to get real open and real honest. But I hear people all the time saying, man, I want to see an outpouring. I want to see God do this and I want to see God do that. But we won't get honest with ourselves and Him. If you're in this room and you say, man, preacher, I've got stuff in my heart and in my thinking toward other people and it's wrong it's because of their culture or their color and I know it now and I've been confronted with it I'm gonna listen to me today is your day of freedom please hear my heart please I normally don't call people down here but I'm telling you God just worked it in my heart this morning like, oh, come on, today? If you've got that in you anywhere, because I hear people throw the terms around. Well, they're from a foreign country. Yeah. Thank God they got to this one. If you have that, a seed of any kind of racism in your life, then I'm asking you to do one of the bravest, most courageous things you can do. Is walk down that aisle and get on bended knee and repent before God Almighty. You want to see God move? You want to see God move in your life? Then we need to love our fellow man. And I'm asking you to do it right now. If you're watching online, you say, Preacher, it's me. I don't like people because they don't look like me. You need to repent right now. You need to say, God, I repent. I turn around and go another way, your way, your vision. And I want to love people like you love people. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on, just leave your heads bowed all over this room, right out there where you're watching. If you say, Preacher, 
I need to make Jesus the Lord of my life today. I need to give my life to the one who gave his son for me. Come on, if you're in here, I want you to slip your hand up real high if that's you. If you're watching online out there, I want you to pray this prayer right after me. Say, Heavenly Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I give my heart and my life to you. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to follow you. And I thank you that you gave your life for mine and that I'm forgiven and that I am free from the bondage of sin. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give God a hand clap. He's good. You know, I couldn't help. You can be seated if you want to for just a minute. I couldn't help but think of my childhood. You all remember this little song? Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. See, we sing, we teach that to our children. But sometimes in our adult life, when we're watching the news, we just need to sit and sing. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. I think it'll take down some of our anger, some of our grief, because we need to remember when we're watching the news and all that is popping up on your phone, because it seems to be the only thing that's popping up is the anger in the world. He loves every one of them. All precious in His sight. Amen? Remember that. Don't ever forget it. Listen, this is our time of service where we get to worship God in our tithe and our offering. And so we're going to pray over that. And then as you leave, you'll be able to put that. Uh, there's buckets at the exits around you and um, so I'm going to pray over that and then we'll get ready to dismiss okay again we're trying to figure out the right way to make all the flow work and and keep it to where everybody can be social distance and six feet apart and all that and so you help us keep working on it amen father right now in the name of Jesus I thank you for each and every tither each and every giver I thank you father God that they're blessed I thank you that They'll always have more than enough. I thank you, Father God, that your word says that they'll never lack for any good thing. And so right now, as they're planting that seed in faith, whether they're doing it online, whether they're doing it text to give, or whether they're dropping an envelope, however they're doing it, a seed is being planted and harvest comes. And it comes quickly. I thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.